If John Kramer ever tells you that he wants to play a game, he's probably not talking about Mario Kart. From a human-sized blender to a recycling machine turned deadly, these are some of the most painful traps from the long-running Saw franchise. Amanda Young was one of Jigsaw's apprentices, meant to carry on John Kramer's work after his death. Before that, though, she was just another player of his twisted game who found her head stuck inside the reverse bear trap. This bulky contraption is exactly what its name suggests. Instead of clamping down, it's built to open with such force that it tears the wearer's jaw apart. Like many of Jigsaw's traps, all the wearer needs to do to escape is find the key and unlock the device, but it's the location of the key that proves problematic. This time, it's been placed in the stomach of Amanda's cellmate, fellow drug addict and dealer, Donnie. At first, it looks like he's already dead, but even after Amanda realizes that he's merely been sedated, she doesn't stop. She digs the key out and unlocks herself with seconds to spare. Instead of self-mutilation, this particular game requires the player to become a killer, something likely to weigh on their conscience for the rest of their life. For Amanda, though, it's only just the beginning of her career in torture. Taking part in one of Jigsaw's twisted games is bad enough as it is, but at least he has the courtesy to allow his victims to suffer in relative privacy, usually. The first big set piece of Saw 3D, the final chapter, is a massive clear box placed in a busy shopping center. Inside the cruel display, Brad and Ryan are forced to fight to the death for Dina, the woman who's been dating both of them and manipulating them into committing crimes for her. They have 60 seconds to tear each other apart before poor Dina is dropped onto the circular saw between them. After the game begins, Dina starts encouraging Brad, but when Ryan gains the upper hand, she shifts her loyalties to him. Realizing they're being manipulated once again, the men decide to let the clock run out instead. What are you doing, you asshole? I think we're breaking up with you, Dina. Just as terrifying as the trap itself is the fact that Jigsaw convinces the men to kill their ex by playing to their alpha male insecurities. At least the public nature of this twisted game means that neither Brad nor Ryan will ever find a date in this town again. Traps in Saw are usually known for being sharp and bloody, but the pig pulper, as seen in Saw 3, sets itself apart by being just plain gross. Drowning is terrifying enough, but drowning in a tub of liquefied, rancid pig carcasses really takes things up a notch. The worst part, however, is that there's nothing its victim can do to save himself except beg for help. Strapped to the bottom of the vat is Judge Halden, who gave a light sentence to the man who killed eight-year-old Dylan Denlin, and it's up to Jeff, Dylan's father, to choose whether or not to spare him. Jeff doesn't have to mutilate himself to save the judge. No, this trial is an emotional one. The grieving dad must incinerate his late son's possessions in order to get the key. Ultimately, Jeff is able to let go, and he saves Halden from a putrid death. The pig pulper is a truly disgusting twist on a classic Saw formula. The Iron Maiden head is a bit like a reverse, reverse bear trap, but it's not quite a straight-up bear trap like you'd find in the woods. Like the full-body medieval torture device that gave the heavy metal band its name, it's a chamber with spikes pointing inward designed to impale its victim when closed. In the interest of convenience, Jigsaw's version only works from the neck up. But that's still more than enough to end the life of whichever unfortunate soul wakes up to find it installed on them. Think of it like a Venus flytrap. That's what happens to police informant Michael Marks in the opening scene of Saw 2. As punishment for a lifetime of watching others and profiting from it, he must dig behind his own eyeball for the key to his salvation. Marx was evidently not a religious person, or he might have remembered the scripture about how if thine eye offends thee, pluck it out. Unable to take the pain of said plucking, he loses his head instead. Recycling glass is good for the planet. Recycling it into shrapnel to be fired repeatedly into someone's back is bad for the body. It's also the copycat Jigsaw's idea of irony and spiral, to punish a corrupt cop who accused his more honest partner of stabbing him in the back. As with most Saw traps that involve one helpless victim and one potential savior, the goal here is forgiveness. Can Ezekiel Banks overcome his mistrust of ex-compadre Dunleavy and save his life? A reasonably decent cop, Banks decides to make the save, but not being a particularly smart cop, he neglects a painfully obvious clue. You can keep him locked up and throw away the key. The decision is yours. Throw away the key? What the The key is in the trash can, but Banks doesn't make the connection until it's too late. He can't get ahead of the glass, as Dunleavy literally suffers a death by a thousand cuts. More or less. Jigsaw and his accomplices can be softies at heart sometimes. They just want people to get along and cooperate. It's not their fault the ne'er-do-wells being tested always resort to violence first. We never learn what Trevor did to deserve torment in Saw 4, but his fellow victim, Art Blank, is a former friend of John Kramer's, a lawyer who defended several unrepentant criminals. If the two had only managed to communicate properly, then they could have helped each other escape from the chain slowly pulling them towards strangulation. 
That's just a little hard to do with Trevor's eyes and Art's mouth sewn shut. Hearing unintelligible sounds, the blinded Trevor panics and starts throwing weapons, prompting Art to beat him to death with a hammer. The entire time, though, the key to the trap is on the back of Trevor's shackles. Had he not lashed out, Art could have removed it and freed them both. Despite his survival, Art isn't able to enjoy his victory for long. He's soon coerced by Jigsaw into setting up even more traps and is eventually shot in the head by the impulsive Officer Rig. Being smashed up against a fence by a bed of nails has got to hurt. If every nail then injects you with acid, then that's a special kind of pain. As far as horror movie victims go, William Easton deserves it. He's a health insurance executive who routinely denies claims, letting people die just because of money. Whether or not accepting John Kramer's claim would actually have been life-saving remains debatable. After all, cancer's a beast and it's tragically unpredictable. Still, in his jigsaw killer mode, Kramer gives Easton one chance at life. Could he earn the forgiveness of a widow whose husband died as a direct result of his insurance denying coverage? The grieving woman can't find space in her heart to forgive the rich businessman, but she can't bring herself to kill him either. So her teenage son does it for her. In a victory for HMO haters everywhere, the insurance executive is denied mercy in one of the most over-the-top death scenes of the entire series. Jigsaw likes to refer to his traps as games, but they're more like creative torture devices. The spiral saw blade blender from Jigsaw, however, is a bit like an actual game, and that game is Operation. This visually striking trap requires a steady hand and has a simple objective. Pull the brake on the bottom to shut off the device before it slices you into mincemeat. The engine powering the contraption once belonged to a defective motorcycle that was sold to Jigsaw's nephew, and it ended up killing him. As punishment for knowingly selling the faulty machine, Mitch must descend into the red cone of death. Mitch thinks he and his fellow captive are able to sabotage the machine, but he underestimates Jigsaw's engineering capabilities. He lets down his guard, believing that the game's over because the blade stopped, and then it starts again, turning him into a Mitch smoothie. The terror here isn't just in the pain of being sliced open, but in the fact that it feels like a rigged carnival game. In Jigsaw, it's used on two separate victims, and neither survives. Whether you're assembling a Lego set or doing a complicated math problem, an early mistake can ruin everything else down the line. That's what happens in Saw 5, but with significantly higher stakes. Five people started out in Jigsaw's gauntlet of torture, but that number has been reduced to two by the time Malik and Britt reach the final trial. It's deceptively simple. All they have to do is fill the device with 10 pints of human blood and they're free to go. Unfortunately, the average adult human contains just 10 to 12 pints. Losing more than half is usually fatal. It's at this point that the truth is revealed. Everyone could have survived the earlier trials if they had just been willing to cooperate. We were supposed to work together, so we all survived. That's the game. As Jigsaw guessed, though, everyone involved was too selfish to consider the possibility. If all five had made it to the end, it would have taken just two pints from each of them, which is just twice as much as the average blood donation. Despite their difficult shared history, Malik and Britt beat the game by finally pooling their efforts and bodily fluids. If you make your living by scamming cancer patients out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, you probably shouldn't mess with John Kramer. The employees of a fraudulent medical program learn this firsthand when they become his latest batch of victims in Saw X. One such scam artist is Matteo, a janitor who pretended to be an anesthesiologist for Kramer's fake surgery. Now, the surgery he's about to perform is very real, only it's going to be on himself and without anesthetic. With the aid of a camera, a bone saw, and some tweezers, Matteo must cut open his own head, grab a piece of his own brain, and dissolve it in a jar of enzymes to unlock the trap key. Somehow, Matteo manages to saw open his skull and grab a chunk of cerebral tissue, an impressive feat considering his extremely traumatic brain injury. Unfortunately for him, his gray matter doesn't dissolve fast enough, and the radiator around his head cooks him to death. Despite Jigsaw's assurances that people have lived long and happy lives with big chunks of their brains missing, it's not clear that any mortal could have survived this trap. It may not be the most gruesome or flashy of the traps, but nothing beats the bathroom occupied by Dr. Lawrence Gordon, Adam Stanhite, and a mysterious body in the original Saw. While many of Jigsaw's victims are given time limits of mere minutes for their trials, this one is a true endurance test. With the action starting at 10.20 p.m. and ending at 6 a.m., Gordon and Stanhite have an entire night to try and escape in an extremely painful way. He doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. Seven hours and 40 minutes is an awfully long stretch of time to contemplate the horror of self-amputation. But when he finally gets down to it, Dr. Gordon ultimately pulls it off rather quickly. To fill out the time, Kramer leaves clues to suggest ways how Dr. Gordon can kill Adam first, and he makes it clear that the good doctor's daughter will be killed if he doesn't comply. 
there's all sorts of surprises in this seedy bathroom, and the biggest one of all arrives at the very end. Future traps may have increased in scope and budget, but there's nothing like the dilapidated bathroom to really get your skin crawling.